I don't think anybody ever wants to be like, you know what, it's gonna drought this year, and then it does, and they're like, yep, I was right. Good morning, beautiful people. You know what, this thing's making a lot of noise. Give me a second. All right, I guess I'll just restart that. Good morning, beautiful people. I didn't think that wagon was gonna be so loud, but it was. If you remember yesterday's video, I was pulling weeds. That's what I get to do again today. And there's some people gonna be like, really, really, man? Like, you're gonna film yourself pulling weeds. You betcha. That's what we're doing today, eh? Yeah, I don't think I really need much introduction here. I got about halfway done with this bed before uh, my back said stop. It's really not that bad. It's just a lot of like bigger weeds and stuff like that. That's all going to the chickens after I pull it out uh, and will ultimately get turned into compost. And then I'll, I'll bring the wagon in here with some hay and I'll top dress everything just to kind of suppress future weeds. Last year, our garlic bed, we only grew a 16 foot uh, by four foot garlic bed, and I didn't mulch it until later in the year, and I wish I had mulched it from the get-go. I don't know why, but I have a weird sneaking suspicion we might have to deal with some drought this year. We did last year, I don't know why. Maybe it's just because by this time last year we'd already had a lot more rain, and I don't know. I don't know, just, just a hunch. I, I could be totally wrong, I would love to be wrong. I don't think anybody ever wants to be like, you know what, it's gonna drought this year, and then it does, and they're like, yep, I was right. But I think what I'm trying to say is, uh, I'm going to be prepared, I'm going to mulch my garlic with the intent of suppressing weeds, and if through doing that, it helps hold moisture and keep this garlic going stronger all the way up until harvest time, so be it, that's good too. All right. Time to pull some weeds. All right, since I know people are gonna ask, this is called a cobra head, kind of a little sharp curved implement. I love these for weeding. I think you can find them on Amazon. Just look for cobra head weeding tool. Um, you'll find them or various derivations of them. It even says cobra head right there on the handle. I liked this one so much, I wanted one that I didn't have to bend over and use, and so I made this one. That was a... Uh, it was like a leaf spring off of a car or something. I forged it down and made my own, whittled down a piece of wood for the handle, and I made a nice long one. Uh, and this one works pretty good. I just need it to be a little bit bigger, but this is really nice, uh, getting in the garden, getting around stuff. But having such a large space, these weeds are so big, it's easier just to grab them, and the more stubborn ones hit them real quick with this thing. So I know there's there's going to be people asking, hey, what is that tool you're using? Well, it's a, it's a cobra head, and that other one, sorry, you can't buy it. I made it. Right, thank goodness. This this is one of those projects, it's not a big project, it's not a hard project, it's just something that has been on my list for like probably about two months 
And it's like, I need to go weed that. The weeds are getting out of control. I need to go weed that. Every time I walk by, every time I can see it out the window, it's like, I can't even see garlic anymore. That looks great. Actually, the weeds were so thick. If you notice the second half of this third row, second row right here, uh, that's all our garlic. We wanted to plant our garlic that we grew and see how it did. It hasn't really done very well, but it could also be that maybe it was getting out competed by the weeds. I'm gonna go take that, throw that in the compost ring up at the chicken coop and go eat lunch real quick. And then I'm gonna come out here and probably, I think Corbin's the only one who doesn't have the, uh, the plague. He, uh, he got over it pretty quick. He's uh, pretty resilient. Be nice to be 11 again. We'll go deal with this stuff and get back to it. That actually took way more hay than I was thinking. I was eating lunch thinking, you know, I'll grab the big wagon and the lawnmower, I'll go down there, I'll pick up hay. We had a hay bale that, I don't know, we'd probably taken about half from in a few spots where we were moving the cow where the grass wasn't real good. And so it was just kind of sitting there. And I was like, why don't I just grab the tractor? I can bring that whole bale up here. I can use what I need on mulching all of these, this garlic. And then the rest I can leave over here for when I finally get back to my potato bed that's been sitting for about a week now. All's well that ends well. I'm glad I finally got this uh, mulched up. This right here was that those two rotten bales that have been sitting here since uh, fall. Yeah, been sitting a long time, maybe even longer than fall. I should probably actually put the rest of that bale on this bed because hay is kind of funny. Uh, it really breaks down. I would say it's probably like 90% air by the time it breaks down. This stuff will just, in a few, probably in a month, will drop by half. And then another month after that, probably by like June, I bet you this is just like a thin coating that the weeds can pop back up through. But it's all right, we're building soil. Gotta do it one way or another. And I know there's gonna be people who are like, hey, why didn't you just put the mulch over the weeds and just use the weeds, kill the weeds and use those as mulch? That is a very good point. That's kind of like the permaculture way to do it. But right now I am building compost. These spring greens that have popped up are some of the best stuff for a compost pile. Uh, they're very vibrant, full of chlorophyll. They make some good compost. Just from yesterday, when I came out to feed this morning, the compost pile was steaming first thing in the morning. Chickens hadn't even been messing with it yet. So just piling stuff on top just that moisture added to that compost pile and it started heating up even more. So that's why I'm willing to break my back, pulling weeds, hauling the weeds someplace when it, there's ways that are way easier. There are places that I will do that. There are places that I will choke out the weeds and you know, cause them to compost in place. But for right now, building compost is more important so I can strategically use it where I need it rather than, well, this is what's right here, so this is what we're using. Not to say that, you know, I'm not doing the same thing by bringing hay here. That's still an input. You get what I'm trying to say. What do you want, Millie? Where were you hiding? 
I haven't seen you all day. You dirty. You been rolling in the dirt? All right, so before I go inside and sit down for a spell, I'm gonna go out here and check on the uh, piglets, make sure everybody's all right. And I thought I'd show you guys my, uh, my latest score. All right, so a friend of mine uh, last week asked if I was busy. I was like, no, why? And he goes, I need to borrow you, your truck, and your trailer. I'm like, okay, what's up? And he goes, I got some stuff I need help picking up. The stuff that he needed help picking up was from a restaurant that had went out of business quite a few years ago. Um, said stuff has been sitting out in the weather for over a decade, and the people just wanted it gone. So this is half of it. The other half he got when we got home, he said, I only want this table and that shelf. He goes, if you want that stuff, just leave it here, consider it yours. <laughs> Uncle. So, um, this one, this one is a long, this is the top to it. I pulled the top off. Um, this has a sink, a built-in sink. Um, I'll probably use this as a, probably a butcher table. I mean, that's a nice long table. I can put bus tubs down here, you name it. This one, I believe this one was set up, you know, it all came out of a commercial kitchen. This one had a, like a built-in shelf that went up on top. He had wanted that, so like, you know, maybe, maybe I'll cut that thing in half and I'll use that as a potting bench in my greenhouse. I don't know. The possibilities are endless. All right, the only thing wrong with the shorter one with the sink in it, mind you, I took the top off, is the corner. Looks like someone ran into it. I actually came out here and played around with it the other night and I actually pulled a lot of that dent off. It was, uh, it was really bad. It was really crumpled in. I probably brought it out a good six inches. These things are 11 and a half feet long. Big, long, heavy. This one has, if you can see back there on that pallet, all the doors for this cabinet. It has sliding doors that cover the front of that. I don't know if I'm gonna use that. I thought it was pretty cool. Doesn't matter what I use it for. That is uh, an amazing thing to just have given to me. Like who cares about a few scratches and dents? Like I got a hammer. I can I can pound some dents out. Like I'm not worried about that. I mean, even, even if I couldn't fix that cabinet, I could still build a table for this and have a nearly 12 foot long butcher table for our outdoor butchering setup. So yeah, I thought I'd, share the uh the good fortune so i'm gonna come out here check on the piglets how you doing mamas oh, i see babies <laughs> hi babies are oh, you gonna come say hi one brave soul all right so raising pigs this whole process we're doing this so we basically become independent of the grocery store when it comes to meat you know, we talk about being independent from the grocery store and to be 100% independent, that's that's a nice nice pipe dream. There are things that we will never grow. Um, there are things that we can't grow. Like I can't grow coffee. Uh, we don't have enough land or the equipment to grow enough wheat to provide us with as much bread as we like to eat. If we had to eat only what we grew, uh, it would probably drastically change the way we eat. And we have drastically changed the way we eat, period, since we started homesteading. It's weird, it's weird to find ourselves here. You know, I could tell you the top 10 favorite fast food restaurants I had all the way up until we got here. And it's just one of those things, like we're happy with the food we make, we're happy with the food we grow. Um, and I'm not saying it to sound like I'm bragging or anything. It's just weird trying to be intentional about your food and actually changing how you eat. It's, it's, it's been a very interesting journey, I can, I can tell you that much. Which leads me to my next point. We have been breeding our pigs. Uh, we got mo so we could have mo pigs. Uh, we've got the ladies separated from the uh, small males. I still have one intact boar that we were gonna sell. That's why they're, they're separated. But these are mainly getting grown out for feeder pigs. We plan on processing these. If they're big enough, we'll do them this year. Like come fall, winter, we'll do them this year. That's only a year and a half grow out. And for guinea hog, that, that's kind of small. They're, uh, guinea hogs are really a two year, 18 month at the most. 
grow out. We have really kind of tried to take responsibility for our, our meat situation. And so far it's working. It's, it's been really cool. Since we've been out here, I think this is our fourth year now. I was telling Meg last night, we walked this property four years ago in March. It's, it's just, it's really weird to think about that we've, we've accomplished so much, we've done so much. Uh, I have learned how to butcher animals. I've learned how to take an animal on the hoof and have food on the table. It's been such an amazingly fun thing to learn. On that note, to those who missed our class, uh, there will be another one in the future. We just haven't planned one out yet, so you can wait. Or, if you are really itching to learn, get your hands in, <laughs> stand super close, and learn how to process a pig. My friend Jason over at Sow the Land and my friend Billy, uh, Permapastures Farm, they are getting together at Jason's place and they're teaching a class. It'll, it's two separate classes. It's gonna be how to scald and scrape a pig and how to skin a pig and then do all the butchering. Um, sounds like it's gonna be an amazing class. It's one of those things, it's hard to find stuff like that, especially outside of the homestead realm. So if anybody you know or any of you guys are interested in learning how to process a pig, we will leave a link. Uh, it'll be down below. Um, I believe they still have tickets. Go check it out. All right. Unlike our normal format going in for dinner time, since we're just having leftovers for dinner tonight and Meg's not feeling good, I think I'm just going to wrap it up right here. So I'll pick this up tomorrow and I guess I'll catch you guys on the next one.